Hi guys, Yurena here and welcome to my channel. So today I have a tutorial for you is DIY V-flat, portable collapsible V-flat. Now I have V-flats in my studio for quite a long time. I think that it's an absolute essential for the studio. So I have the white one and the black one and I made them myself as well. Uh, I will not going to show you how I made those, but the principle will be the principle will be exactly the same as I was going to make uh, the foldable um, collapsible ones. The first thing I want to mention that the collapsible one, the portable one, are great because you can actually fold them and it fit in your car, and you can actually brought them to the location. When the ones that I have, it's absolutely not. You just can have them in one place. Of course, the foldable one is smaller than the ones that I have in my studio, but it still uh, will be enough, the size, the human size, it will still be enough to be a reflector, or you can open it up and use as a background as well. Uh, so that's definitely something that will be very useful, very cool, and if you do a lot of outside shoots, that, that can be a very great essential for you. Okay. So now, for this tutorial, I got four uh, cardboards. I believe they 80 inch long. So the big question is where I got them. So boards like this, I don't think it's very difficult to source. Uh, I personally got them uh, in Texas Art Supply. I love that store. If you live in Houston or I believe they all over Texas. So if you live in Texas, then they amazing art supply store. They have very specific, awesome materials. And I go there for all of my needs. And I got my boards, large uh, four by eight feet uh, boards for V flat. I got there as well. They have a huge selection of different types of boards and materials and foam boards and, um, Whatever you might dream, dream for art, painting supplies, canvases, amazing. Like there are so many wonderful things that you can use for photography. I really like that store and I cannot say enough. And the stuff is also very, very nice. And the prices are, I think, the best that I come across uh, from different stores. So I think also the prices are the best. So I love that store. Definitely recommend if you in Texas, the Texas Art Supply Store is somewhere that you want to go and get them. So I have a four boards and originally I wanted to do uh, black and white. So one, white on one side and black on the other side. But it turned out that the white boards are, was about $5 and the black almost $10. So there was double the price. So I decided that's fine. I already have plenty of black V-flats, but by any means, if you do, do want to do it, you can buy uh, two and double them. So you just can paste them with the glue together and do exactly the process that I will show you later on in the tutorial. Uh, but I have a different hack for you. Like I was thinking, okay, so what can I do with the different side? Because I already have a V-flat and I'll have the second one. I don't need so many like but also i was thinking so if i will not have one white one black then what can i do with the other side i mean of course i can leave it just white but you know if you can have it something else then why not so i was thinking different ways um you know you can paste a different you can put a material on top of it you can spray paint it i mean spray paint is actually cheaper so i got the spray paint and I've chosen this awesome burgundy uh, red color. I thought it's beautiful. And when I saw uh, in, the, in this store, in Texas Art Supply Store, they have a huge selection of paints. Such amazing colors. Now this is, uh, it's one of the comes that from professional lines. So they have amazing color variations. And this one, this cost $10, definitely cheaper than, Mm, you know, just buy the different boards, uh, like to buy four boards, ten dollars each. So it would be additional forty dollars instead of ten. So it's you know uh, only twenty five percent from the price, uh, and you can have any color you want. So uh, that's what I will going to do. First, I'm going to assemble the board, v, uh, collapsible V flat, and then the one side I'm going to paint with uh, spray paint. Hopefully it will work. I don't know. It's just an idea, but bear with me and we will see. So yes, if it will work, 
there's so many amazing colors. I was there for maybe like 15 or 20 minutes, just standing by the paints. Couldn't decide which one to choose because there's so many amazing colors that I would absolutely love. And if oh my God, just you look at this color. Can you imagine background color like this? Incredible. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with this color. And if this idea will work, I will definitely go back and get more boards and just have more different colors and paint them and have collapsible V flats for my studio because uh, just the idea that you can just spray paint them easily and you know use it and they're reusable that's the thing it's not just the paper that you cut and you have to throw away they're reusable and potentially if you use them nicely these boards they can be sore for you for years and years so i think it's actually a good bargain okay so it's been a long time let's get started so for this tutorial, apart from the foam boards, uh, four foam boards, uh, you will also be needing a duct tape or gaffer tape. In case that you don't know what's the difference, gaffer tape is it made from, uh, I, I believe, vinyl. And the idea behind it, it doesn't reflect light. So that's why photographers love to use it. But I feel that, uh, I mean, I bought this one. This one's supposed to be a gaffer tape, but I don't think so. I, 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 don't, I don't think it is because it is still pretty reflective. Um, so yes, I use uh, duct tape just because gaffer tape is way more expensive, but if you have it, you can use it. Duct tape serves for me just as well. And the second thing is you are going to be needing a Velcro. So this one is industrial strength one, and this one I got in Home Depot. I don't think that you don't, you need industrial strength one per se for this project because the boards are very light. It's just this one I already had. I use it for the different project, so that's what I'm going to use it. This is just leftover will be just enough for me. So yes, just a walkthrough. Um, you can also buy if you wonder where you can buy them. Pretty much any supermarket, like a big uh, supermarket, have it. Walmart has it. Uh, any craft stores have has it so you can ask the velcro and is the one um, in case that you never pay attention and you don't really know what it is so these are velcro that they uh, stick together just as so yep now you know so yes these are uh, this is this is the ones that we were going to be using yes and let's start First, I took two boards and placed them together and started taping. And then I remember that I'm making collapsible ones, so they have to be able to fold. So that's not the way to tape them together. So I had to remove the duct tape and the damage boards a little bit, but oh well. And then I placed them together. This is the right way to do that. So you fold them together, you tape them. There will actually be extra space in the middle in the tape, so you will be able to fold them just like that and then I reverse them, flip, flip them upside down and you see there is a Romanian tape left there so I spread it in the center and now I'm going to tape on the other side just like I did before so now they taped on the both sides and the first half is done just like that Next, I'm taking two other boards and for these ones, I'll take a Velcro and I'm going to cut them in four equal pieces. Now I'm going to apply those, uh, I'm going to stick this Velcro onto the board and make sure that from one side you will leave some space about two inch just because you will have to tape it there so make sure you will not tape it over the velcro and i spread them equally on the side of the board and now i place together the second board to make sure that i stick the other side of the velcro exactly the same space where the uh, opposite is so they would stick together nicely and just like that and I must say that Velcro is super strong. Now I put them together both sides and making sure that they all assemble and fold uh, nicely. And they do. OK, 
Okay, and now the last stage is I need to paste them together. Oh, okay guys, so I got a little kind of hiccup because when I was uh, doing my project, my duct tape is finished because I didn't have the new roll, I just have the ones from whatever I did my V-flat previously. So I had to run to the store and buy the new one. Um, yes, and now let's continue. I think the color is a little bit different. It's white, but kind of off-white. But anyways, let's continue. Okay, so please uh, take a note here that I also taped together uh, one half first and the other one later. And the reason why I left the um, in the center just because they have to be able to fold. I flip them and I'll just tape them again from the other side and I'll be done. And here you go, look at that. Just like that you got yourself a foldable, portable V-flat that is easy to collapse and easy to assemble and it's uh, still a nice size that you can just bring yourself anywhere you can. So you see the, the Velcro on one side and well, it's, you know, it's a little bit messy. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it doesn't really matter. It does the job. It will reflect light perfectly. And if you will use it as the background, you can just clean it up later on in Photoshop. So just like this, it collapses so easily and you can bring it up so nicely. And you see the size of it is really nice as well. And yes, very nice. Okay guys, so now I'm finished with the V-flat. I'm really happy the way it turned out. Even though there is kind of duct tape, a little bit different color, but it doesn't matter because anyways, if you will use it as a background, you will go into um, take care of it in Photoshop later on anyways, if you will want to remove the ridges and I'm pretty sure that you do. And now we will go to stage number two. We will go into paint one side red color with the spray paint. I'm excited! Hi guys, it's 8.30 in the morning and I woke up early just to try to beat the heat and I'll try to do my painting right away. So let's start! My idea first, uh, I want to paint the edges first, lying flat, and then I'm going to uh, put it straight and paint over uh, just because so it will paint all evenly. Because it, when it lays flat, you know, sometimes some places paint can go more and there's less, and I don't want that. But first, I want to paint the edges, just make sure that it does not spray everywhere. Also, I lay it flat just because I want to make sure that there is no paint doesn't go on the other side. Uh, I don't have much experience with spray paint, so I'm just trying to be careful. Already now, uh, now that's my probably first experience painting something big with spring paint, 
and I kind of regret it already. I think just having the regular paint and have a roller or just paintbrush would be much better because it's just dripping and it's just not paint equally and it's kind of start to um, I'm not really happy with that to be honest I have this like a little tiny tiny uh, roller brush and I'll try to smooth it out the, the, the dripping of the paint made it so much worse <laughs> oh well also after i painted i noticed that the, it's start warping the board start warping which is a not a good thing because of the paint okay honestly i'm not sure i'm debating i'm not sure that i should continue just because uh, i don't like the result that it gives uh, i think just the regular roller um, roller brush with the regular just acrylic or water based whatever paint would do better job with this particular thing and now because of all the paint as i said the board is warping and uh, it just doesn't, doesn't feel that it's performed that well that i expected so i don't know of course it's not the way that i would want to leave it but i'll probably stop painting and i don't know maybe i'll just buy the regular paint and paint it with the roller and try to paint over to and, and see okay so now um, uh, this is my attempt to devorp it a little bit before I'll go to the store and find uh, some acrylic paint because I still want to finish my project uh, I'll try to I try to put some flat heavy things on top of it and hopefully it will help help out because I really want my project to work out so yes let's see how it will turn out so first what comes to paint when I decided to get some paint and just paint it with the brush I thought well you know I need a lot of paint and I need something cheap so you know it would all go with the concept of DIY project because usually you do DIY something to make it less expensive than if you would buy it and so I decided to go to the dollar store and get some paint there and this is acrylic paint and I don't do that okay because first of all this is the only three uh, three uh paint that they had they didn't have any more and then i went to the other store and they didn't have stock at all of the paint it was a mess also these three this will not be enough to cover probably even one board if any just because you cannot dilute it with water because even paint by itself warps the boards and if you dilute it with water it will warp it even more so that's really not an option and you will, will have to need like a gazillion of these ones to really cover the board and then I get a great idea that is what you should do just go to any of the home improvement store, it's Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever it is, and get the sample paint. This paint uh, I used to paint my board, the ones that you have on the other side, the gray one that I use all the time. Okay, so this is what you need. And this is a wall paint, and because they're very opaque, and also this is a, 250 milliliters 7.25 fluent os sample will cost you uh, 325 350 with tax for this one and uh, okay i'll be honest this one will not be enough to cover all four of them it was enough to cover three uh, this one is completely almost empty so you will need be two so you will be needed two but it will still be seven dollars per two and they very opaque there is a lot of white selection and you want to make it uh, make sure that it's flat and yes that is such a simple solution and you can get any color you want obviously very quick you want to if you're starting out and this is your first V flat you want to have and you want to do two colors white and black 
that is what you need because this is hands down the most used colors in photography like in terms of reflectors and backgrounds white and black now if you have white and black then the third option can be neutral gray just like that one now this is three that i have in my studio major one and that's all i need i do have uh, colored backgrounds i rarely use them this three is more than enough Ideally what I would suggest, okay, you can have a, a gray or maybe like a neutral warm caramel light brown type of thing Those are uh, good for portraits and goes with the skin tone very nicely as well Ideally what you want is two V flats, maybe one black and white and the other one is gray on one side and like uh, the warm neutral one on the other side or you maybe want to have it some color if there is some color that you often use now when i said that one will be not enough for your uh, v-flat two will be more than enough trust me uh, by the way if you decide to go with spray paint the one good thing about it it was it's very opaque this was the the most uh, opaque one um, finish and of course it's more convenient it does and when it dry out it, it didn't look as bad as when it was wet so i mean it's still an option but i would still trust me the best and the cheapest option is this one is the wall paint and sample and in your uh, so what i was saying is take two Two will be enough for you to cover and you can take especially if you get colors like you want to make it shade some shade like i did red you can get um like take for example red one two red and the other one maybe three shades darker or lighter so whenever you hand paint it with the strokes you can create a vignette so you can apply the darker one on the edges and closer to the center you will apply the lighter one and then it will create this like beautiful vignetting it will look wonderful and beautiful for portraits so that's something that you might um, keep in mind the video when i'll use my beautiful new red board is coming oh by the way um, also the colors when after i painted it does it did warp my boards uh, a little bit so i again put some press on them just like i showed earlier in the video and uh, I put them outside because I think that heat and humidity of Houston will finally play into my advantage so I will feel that it's gonna uh, make the boards flat easier and that's probably about it stay tuned for the video where I'm going to use my beautiful new red board and hopefully you enjoyed if you want to see more of my photography work please follow me on instagram it's yurinachi underscore photo please like this video if you did let me know if you were going to make this board and if you do please let me know in the comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i truly truly wish to see you next time bye